Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are working on the TiVo Tarantula Pro. So stay tuned, this is gonna be fun. So they've pretty, I was just telling the live stream, they've pretty much nailed the packing. This is all very nicely packed. Everything fits in its proper spot. And it's all nice high density foam. So they do a decent job on packing. Alrighty. As you can see, we have a smorgasbord of parts. What you don't see is the bed and chassis down here. These are all your baggies of parts. These are all your frame pieces. And it's a complete kit. You have to build everything because this is what they sent me. <laughs> um, I like the fact that there's a metal frame around the power supply. That's nice. The XT60 connector is sitting right there. Although, that cabling seems awfully thin. I wonder how many amps this is designed for. It seems like really thin cable for that connector. Um, I guess as long as it's rated for what the printer draws, we'll find out. Oh yes, this is going with me. All the tables are going with me. I can't bring furniture, but the tables are going with me. Uh, your frame bits. I love the green anodizing. That's really nice. So this is definitely a full-on kit. You have to build everything. So don't, this is not a pre-assembly. This is something you're going to have to put aside some time and you're going to have to build it. It shouldn't be hard, but it's not a pre-assembled kit like an Ender 5. But then again, it's 200 bucks. <laughs> shipped. $199 shipped. That's, that's pretty cheap. So stay tuned as we continue the assembly. No printed instructions, boo. No spool holder, boo. Not enough filament to print the spool holder, boo. SD card with no SD card reader, boo. The full source code available on the SD card. Hell yes. Good job, TiVo. Keep that up. The instructions are on the SD card and the full source code is on the SD card. That's awesome. I've already found a small snafu on the first step of the printer assembly. We are to use the A01 bag to assemble the H frame, and then the Y axis will go in the middle. Um, except that it doesn't tell me the orientation of this part. And there's four possible orientations for me to put this part. I can have it this way, this way, this way, or this way. Because this part has five holes. See? Fifth hole but that fifth hole is not referenced in the instructions. So, I don't know where that hole goes. It tells me the orientation of these parts, but not the orientation of this part. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to clean up your instructions with, Tivo. You have a fifth hole here. You need to designate where that hole goes in the orientation for putting this part together. All right, page one is done. The H frame is assembled feet are assembled. The Y-axis screws through the H-frame, so be careful not to over tighten. You don't want to strip the aluminum. Feet just hammer nut onto the bottom, and I still don't know where that hole goes. Hopefully it doesn't go on the left-hand side. That's where I put it. And that is the base of your printer. So we will now continue forward with assembly. The next step was to build the front facade, which includes the LCD panel. So you have brass standoffs and you have eight screws. So you screw the brass standoff into the LCD breakout board and then the other four screws into the brass standoffs to hold it on the front. You don't have to remove the knob. The knob will fit through the square hole and then you just preset your four hammer nuts on the sides in preparation for installing this in the frame of the printer. Next step will be, looks like, Y axis idler and motor plate. Righty, the next assemblies are finished. What did I do with the first assembly? So you have the Y axis idler and the Y axis drive assembly. They are finished now. That was the next step. They used the parts in bag A03. There's three parts left over. I'm assuming they're spares, but just in case they're not, I put them back in a bag in case I need to recall them again. And now we are on to the next step, which is the carriage assembly. Stay tuned. Alrighty, the next step is to put your, X, your y, or bed carriage assembly 
Y carriage assembly together um, with your eccentrics and your spacers and your nuts. Follow the instructions, they are fine. Make sure the eccentrics on the right side. Um, the back of the printer is the long portion of the printer so with the two holes here. So make sure your bracket goes on this side. It's on the same size as the two tabs that come out of the bottom of this assembly here. Okay. You might as well tighten up your wheels while you're here. You want to loosen them until this wobbles and then tighten it only exactly enough to stop the wobble. If you look at it carefully, you can actually see which end wobbles and which end needs to be tightened or not. But you want them both to be snugged up only enough to stop the wobble. Too much and you'll get binding. This should roll cleanly and freely with no bump, 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 which would indicate you have it too tight. So nice and free. And the next step will be to install the other end of this and I believe the front of the printer. So stay tuned. All right, in the next step, we installed the belt, the idler, and the stepper motor. And we also installed the um, brain box. So this is the box that contains the parts. Although I don't like that that's exposed. I'd like to see a cover on there, Tivo, even if it's just plastic. So I'll probably 3D print something to cover that. Um, and it's only held on by one hammer nut, but it integrates with the rest of it, so it should be okay. And we will go from there. Next step, I believe, is front panel and power supply. Front panel installed, power supply and brain box installed. The directions were a little bit goofy regarding the brain box. It had us installing the brain box on this beam here in the picture, and that was clearly incorrect. The brain box actually goes flush with the back left-hand side when looking from the front, right-hand side when looking from the rear panel, and a single bolt onto the Y rail, and then the power supply mounts next to it with its three bolt sitting there. I couldn't get this power cable not to keep falling down in between these, so I just put a zip tie through the hole here to hold that power cable up there, so I don't have to worry about that power cable drooping down, although I missed that negative wire. That's okay, that'll stay up there. See how it wants to keep coming down. But otherwise, that is done. Now we go on to the next step. I know you guys love this part. Peeling off the plastic, you weird Corn hungry freaks. Yeah, you love when you peel the plastic, don't you? <laughs> oh, it's stuck according to the zip tie. There it goes. <laughs> Alright, beds installed. Bolt, spring, wheel. Do not over tighten the wheels. I normally like to tighten a bed all the way down and then loosen as necessary. But if you tighten them all the way down, these bolts will hit this frame up here. So be careful with that. Also, don't forget to install these two screws back here to hold the power supply onto the back here. The same bag that includes these three screws here. It's the same type of screws right on the back here. Bed connects. This I don't like. That is screaming. Uh, maybe not. Okay, it doesn't go far enough forward for that to be an issue. Normally, I'd be concerned about this grabbing onto this. But this bed is as far forward as it goes. And it doesn't grab. So you'll be fine. No problems there. Uh, tension relief is built into the build plate. I like that. And this bed is nice and thick and nice and flat. I see no warping, no bending whatsoever in this plate. And next step is finished. End stop switch. That's why the two bolts on the bottom are longer than the two bolts on the top. Stepper motor installed. Basically slide it all the way on and off by little. And then your bushing for your lead screw goes there. I love the fact that they use substantial bolts for the x-arm and they go into inserts in the aluminum so that you're not stressing the aluminum when you put these bolts on and you can actually put them on tight so that x-arm is not going to move that is excellent Alrighty, the x-axis carriage is assembled no issues no problems that worked well and i also finished assembling the other end of the x-axis carriage for the z-axis carriage so this part here and this part here are how it rides vertically up and down. So those install on that side. And your idler installed on this side. On to the next step. Alrighty, the verticals are installed. This one requires a slight alignment shift, but that was fine. They can twist, so you just adjust them until they're straight. Then the Z motor is installed. Coupler is installed. Z nut installed. X-arm installed. I ended up replacing 
these bolts because they went in too far and they hit this. And I replaced them with these, which worked perfectly. And as you can see, they don't stick out at all. So that's perfect. Onwards and upwards, I believe we're going to be putting the top of the printer on, the extruder assembly, and then we're going to wire it up. Bracket installed, hot end installed, belt installed, end stop switch installed. This end stop switch installed. Extruder and feeder unit installed. Still have to put the PTFE tube in. Okay. Now, this is wrong. You can see there's an angle between this rod and this rail. I physically cannot bring the printer all the way down. There's no way the stepper motor has enough torque to do that. It binds too much. This needs to be moved out. So I'm going to loosen these bolts which go into these um, hammer nuts. And I'm going to put a shim in here to push this out because that needs to come out. That's not going to work. Okay, I fixed this. You will need to use two of the longer bolts, not this long, but longer than this one, okay? You'll need to use two of the brass washers and three of the split washers for each nut. As you can see, that's what I have here, okay? Then you take the wrench, you bend the end of this 90 degrees, because otherwise the wrench will hit the bed when it slides back, which you don't want. Okay, so now you can see my bed clears the wrench. And you can slide the wrench in here and use it as a shim. And that gets you the right angle so that this is perpendicular or parallel with the rail. Okay. Um, that is a way for you to fix this printer using what is included with the printer to do it. Um, so you don't need to buy or add anything. Just use these existing parts to make the printer work correctly. And that will work. Um, one thing notably missing from the directions is connecting any wires. Okay, you're also going to need to shield the end of this here, okay? Because this wire tends to want to come up like this and can get caught in here like that. And now you won't be able to pull this forward because it's going to get jammed in here and snake. So we need something to, probably the easiest thing to do, I guess just to put a cap on the end of this so that it's rounded. So there's nothing for it to snag and grab. You don't have to worry about the screw because, as you can see, that's as far as the bed goes forward and it won't snag the screw. But it absolutely will snag in here. And then once that snags, you're done. See, now it's pulling the wires out of the sheathing and everything. So you got to be careful with that. So this will need a cap. And um, from the factory, if you want to fix this TiVo, maybe a bevel in this might do it. But I think it might still grab on the inside if it falls in the hole. So it'll probably easier just to have a cap that goes over top of this. And you'll be good to go. So now, unlike the instructions, we're going to wire this up. So, one moment. Alrighty, wiring and final hookup should now be finished. So, PTFE tube. And I, of course, attached the umbilical for the hot end to it. Comes down here. I give this little berth here so it doesn't get jammed up in these gears. Keeps it away from that. Attached along the length here, splits off, goes back to here. Make sure this cable goes underneath your hot end cable so that when this pulls forward, it does not pull on the other cables. A little piece of tape on the end here will keep this wire from getting stuck inside that opening there, so you don't have to worry about that. I did a little creative rerouting of the wires. So the wire that would normally come out here and go to this end stop, instead I pushed it back through the hole, made it come out this hole, and ran it back here so it's a lot neater. It looks a lot nicer. Uh, and that's it. Otherwise, not too bad. Um, double check your heat sinks here. I had one heat sink sitting right on top of the pins for the, um, the stepper driver, and that would not have ended well if I booted up like that. That would have ended poorly. It looks like this is also pre-wired for a potential BL Touch upgrade. I see wires here that look similar to BL Touch wires. And there's another aircraft connector here. So I'm guessing they're going to sell a little kit where all you got to do is plug these in, plug this in, bolt it into your hot end, and you're good. So I'll look into seeing about that. I would like to see you guys secure this. Have something here to grab the end of this power supply. I have it pinned up right now up here. But I would like to see this power supply pinned up against this. Because otherwise it scrapes along your table here. And um, is the heat bed AC? No, I'm pretty sure it's 24 volt. But that looks like a non-cooled power supply. It looks like an open power supply. 
Uh, so I don't even know if there's a fan in there. There might not be a fan in this power supply. It might be air cold. Like passively air cold, not even active air cold. Um, these are not, um, no directions for this, but if you look closely at the board in here with a light, you can see one is marked, the front one is EXP1, so run that to EXP1. The back one is EXP2, run that to EXP2. Once again, I pinned up the cable a little bit right here, just so that this doesn't dangle down and get caught on stuff. Otherwise, we should be about good to go. The only goof up I made is I may have made the belt a little too short. As you can see, my um, pulley here does not go all the way back. So I may have to loosen up this belt a little bit so I can slide this back further. We'll see if that affects my build volume too much. I mean, I can go all the way to the end of the bed. And I do make it all the way to the front of the bed. So I'm not too worried about that. We shall see. Time for first power up. Thank you. 